week of the Democratic National Convention, which ended with Joe Biden being officially nominated as the candidate. And tomorrow, the Republican National Convention will start and end by marking President Trump as his opponent. It's the same outcome of political conventions for decades, but of course, it looks and feels a lot different during COVID this year. Some political analysts think these forced changes may not actually be all bad. They may be forcing some new blood and fresh ideas into a system that's been more or less the same for years and years and years and years. So in our deep dive today, I'm talking to Jennifer Anderson, a professor of political science at the University of Louisville. She's telling us the history behind political conventions and what the future for them might look like. Conventions have not been meaningful in selecting the presidential nominee since the 1970s arguably even before that. The result is decided months before the convention even takes place. So some Americans say, why do we still have these? And that leads beautifully into my question, which was, and I quote, are these a relic of the past? That's what I wrote on my notebook. Uh, because, you know, like you mentioned, just the, the purpose of them seems outdated. But then also, if you look at the convention before this year, they didn't feel like a 21st century phenomenon. And it just made me wonder if these changes this year, which were necessary because of COVID, might end up kind of just changing conventions in the future. I would argue that conventions are not relics of the past. They have a different purpose in the 21st century than they did in the past, but they give a public spotlight to each party. Now, when they're virtual, like they are this year, they feel very pre-packaged and controlled by the party leadership. But when they're face-to-face, -face, they allow for disagreement between the party and puts forward a marketplace of ideas that's really essential for democracy. These kinds of things gain attention and spark national debate in ways that we're not gonna see from an only virtual prepackaged event. Now, I pulled the, the Nielsen numbers and it says about 18.6 million people watched on Monday, which actually is somewhat high compared to any other TV show. But if you think about if 138 million people voted in 2016, that's 13% of voters who would watch the convention. So it made me wonder, you know, who the convention is for. Is it for the voters or is it more for the party to kind of figure its stuff out before heading into the general election? That's a fair point. A lot of people are arguing that these days the party conventions are more of a pageant and an expensive way to get on camera and pop a lot of balloons. But even though we may only have a subset of American voters watching the conventions on television, they're talked about in all kinds of media in addition to television. So we see people tweeting about them. We see them being talked about in stories on news outlets all online. So they really start a lot of conversations, even if the viewership isn't as high as we would like for it to be.